Hi everyone, I'm John Mirzma, and I'm a Cisco Collaboration Instructor at Sunset Learning. Welcome to our demonstration configuring Cisco Prime Collaboration, both provisioning and assurance to simplify deploying endpoints users and to gather information, to gather analytics, statistics, information about your collaboration deployment that can help make deploying your collaboration network a lot easier. We're going to show you how to take both Prime servers, provisioning and analytics, and connect them to your Unified Communication Manager cluster. In this demonstration, we're going to configure our Cisco Prime provisioning server to integrate with our collaboration servers. That means we're going to connect Prime provisioning to Unified Communication Manager, Unity Connection, and IAM and Presence. We access the Cisco Prime collaboration server using a web browser in the same way that we access all of the other Cisco collaboration servers. And when we first access Prime provisioning, we can see that we've got the getting started window. This gives us the ability to go right in and get to work. We can choose system setup, manage network, add devices, add infrastructure, which is what we're going to do. And we can also examine our licensing. This version of Prime Collaboration uses the standard license model. That means that it's free and that it can manage a single cluster. So if you've got a single cluster, there you go. Just use Prime Collaboration. If you have multiple clusters and you want to manage them with your Cisco Prime Collaboration server, you're going to have to buy an advanced license. We're going to choose Do Not Show This on Startup and we'll go into some of these settings directly. Now, if you wanted to see that window and it didn't pop up, you can still access it by clicking the flag. Brings up the Getting Started window. We're going to begin by going to Design and then selecting our Infrastructure Setup. We're not going to begin using the wizard. Instead, we're going to go in there and manually add our components. And as we can see, we've got the Infrastructure Setup Add option. And as of right now, we have not added any of our servers. We've got our Unified Communication Manager server, our Unity Connection server, voicemail, and I am in presence. Let's go ahead and add those. So we're just going to choose Add. We get a pop-up window. We'll go ahead and give it a name, any name that you'd like. The IP address of our Unified Communication Manager server. In this example, that's going to be 10.4.5.15. And then the application. Notice the different servers that we can add to Prime Provisioning. Unified Communication Manager, Unity Connection, Unity Express, which is voicemail, router-based voicemail. Communications Manager Express, which is router-based call control. Those are two topics that we covered in the last course. But there's a variety of collaboration devices that can be added. So Prime Collaboration has the ability to work with a whole bunch of different servers that we're likely to find in our collaborations network. We're going to choose our version. And in this demonstration, we're using 10.5.2. We're not going to be using LDAP. So that means our users are going to be configured directly on our Unified Communication Manager server. We're going to put in the web login. Collaboration Server's Unified Communication Manager has two user accounts, one for Linux and then one for the Collaborations Manager program. That's the username that we're going to use, the one for the Collaboration Manager. If we were going to use the username for the Linux portion, that would just be admin. Now we are deploying extension mobility in our cluster, so we'll give it a service name of EM. And now we need to provide the service URL. Where do you get that? Well, you can find it on the web pretty easily. Just go use your favorite search engine, search Cisco Extension Mobility URL, and you'll find the service URL. Put in the IP address of the server that you're using, in this case, 10.4.5.15, which is our Unified Communication Manager publisher. Put that in the service URL, and that's all we need for extension mobility. Now, here on the Prime Collaboration server, once we've got this information added, we click Save. And then from there, we're going to have to synchronize. Once we get the pop-up that the device has been added, we can select it and then look for the little icon. Put your mouse over that and then we get the device details pop-up window. At the very bottom, we can test connection. We can start the infrastructure synchronization. And that's what we're going to do in order to make sure that our prime collaboration server is able to communicate and synchronize to our unified communication manager server. Now, the amount of time that it takes to synchronize will vary depending on your deployment. Our experience is that it takes about two minutes. So we'll go ahead and give it a few minutes, and we'll come back. A few minutes later, we're back, and we can see that our infrastructure synchronization has completed. Now we're going to continue the process and add our 
Unity Connection Server, and then our IAM and Presence Server. Click Add. We'll go ahead and give it a name for Unity Connection. Call it Yukon. Put in the IP address. And that's going to be 10.4.5.17. The application, we're going to have to select Unity Connection. Our version, 10.5.2. Our username, this is going to be for the application, CUCM admin. Then the password. And then Unity Connection also wants to know our Linux username. And that's going to be admin. And then we'll enter the admin password. Click Save. And then we're going to have to do the same thing, synchronize. We'll select Yukon. Select the icon next to the Yukon server. And we're going to choose Start Infrastructure Synchronization. We'll give it a few moments, come back, and we should see that our results show synchronized. They do. We have a status of completed, and now we're going to do the same thing for our IAM and present server. We're going to click Add, give it a name, IMP, the IP address, which is going to be 10.4.5.18. We're going to make it Cisco CM IAM and presence. We're going to choose the version, 10.5.2. The only device protocol option that we have, and then our application username and password, which is going to be CUCM admin, and then our password. Click save, rinse, repeat. Go ahead and click the icon, click start infrastructure synchronization, and give it a few moments to complete. And we should have all of our servers synchronized and ready to manage, ready to provision. And voila, by now you know the drill. All three servers have been added. They've all synchronized. We're ready to go. Coming up next, we're going to show you how to group our servers into domains and then create service areas so that we can deploy policy. Remember, the number one word, the reason that we're here, the whole point of this whole exercise, besides certification, I know that's true for some of you, but for most of us, the number one word that describes our intention is predictability. This is going to do exactly what we need it to do. Service areas and domains are going to help us achieve that goal. That's coming up next.